Okay, finding the vertex. This was Tuesday's lesson. And it's just taking Monday's lesson one step further. So I wanted to see if you could figure that one out. It was in the reading that I gave you. So some of you struggled with it and were really waiting for an instructional video. But that was kind of by design. I wanted to see if you could figure it out on your own. So if you could, great. If not, this explanation should make it pretty clear now that you've thought about it. Then it'll be easier to understand when I explain it. So finding the vertex starts off with finding the axis of symmetry. Because think about it, the axis of symmetry splits the parabola in half. That means it's always going to go right through the vertex. Because the vertex has got to be right in the middle of the parabola. It's the very lowest point in this case. If the parabola is flipped upside down, then it's the very highest point. So the vertex is just the point that's in the middle of the parabola at the very bottom. So that point is going to be an ordered pair, an x, y coordinate. And the x coordinate is always going to be on the axis of symmetry. So if your axis of symmetry is at negative 3, then your vertex is to the left 3 and down how many ever spaces. So it's negative 3, comma, your y coordinate. So to find the vertex, you find the x-coordinate first, and you find it the same way that you found the axis of symmetry, which is x is equal to negative b over 2a. That was the formula that you used on Monday that I, was in the video. So if we use this example that I gave you here, 2x squared minus 12x plus 20, you would have the negative of b, and b is negative 12, over 2 times a, and a is 2, so it would look like this. The negative of negative 12 is positive 12. 2 times 2 is 4, and 12 divided by 4 is 3, so it looks like this. Positive 12 divided by 4 is 3, so your x-coordinate, or your axis of symmetry in this case, is 3. Now that we know that, our vertex like I said earlier, is an ordered pair, an x and a y coordinate, it's 3 comma something. We're almost there. We just need the y now. And to get the y, if you want to know where any point on this parabola is, you sub substitute in a number for x, and it'll tell you the y coordinate of that x value. All right, so we're going to substitute in 3 for x into this equation. So we're saying if we come over three spaces, how far up or down do we have to go until we hit this parabola? So we're going to go over three spaces and see how far up or down we go. So your equation is going to look like this. 2 times 3 squared instead of x squared minus 12 times 3 instead of 12 times x plus 20. So all I did was take the equation from the example and I substituted a 3 in for x. So it's... 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3. 3 squared is 9, and 2 times 9 is 18. So it's 18 minus 36 plus 20. <clears throat> All right, you guys good with that? The 3 squared is 9, and 2 times 9 is 18? All right, and then you do the math, and you get negative 18 plus 20, which is positive 2. So if we substitute in a 3 for x y is equal to positive 2, just like that. Well, I wrote down 2 twice. I didn't need to do that. So when x is 3, y is 2, and that is our vertex for that equation, the point 3, positive 2. Now, the homework for today is factoring. <clears throat> And this is what we did last week. We found x-intercepts. So the homework for today is review from last week. So the, I think it was the very first video I posted from last week on Monday uh, said how to factor. But I'm going to go over that again because it's been over a week and we didn't practice a lot of it. And there's quite a few problems on Wednesday to factor. And so you're going to need some more practice factoring. So here's what I would call a pretty straightforward, simple problem to start with. x squared minus 5x minus 14. 
All right, so if you remember to factor, you're looking for two integers, two whole numbers. They could be positive, they could be negative, but they can't be decimals. You want two whole numbers. If they're not going to be whole numbers, then factoring doesn't work out that well, and you want to use the quadratic formula or complete the square. So I gave you an example here where there are two numbers that when you add them together, they will equal negative 5, and when you multiply them together, they will equal negative 14. And those two numbers are negative 7 and positive 2. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5, and negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. So your next line would be two parentheses with those two numbers in it, x minus 7 and x plus 2. Now it doesn't matter which parenthesis you use first. You, I could have switched that around and said x plus 2 times x minus 7 because you know 3 times 4 is 12 and so is 4 times 3. When you're multiplying the order doesn't matter which comes first or which comes second. All right. Now if you wanted to find the x-intercepts you'd have to say what do we put in for x to make y equal to 0? Well, now that we factored it, we know that one of these two parentheses has to equal 0 because 0 times anything is 0. So we could put in a 7 for x. We'd have 7 minus 7 and 7 plus 2. So if I substitute in a 7 for x, I get 7 minus 7 in the per first parenthesis and 7 plus 2 in the second. So I end up with 0 times 9, and like I said, anything times 0 is 0. So I just put 7 in there because I knew it was going to work. But how did I know that it was going to work? Because I did the math in my head. I said x minus 7 has got to equal to 0. So what do I plug into this first parenthesis to make it equal to 0? I plug in a 7. So you would do the same thing for the second parenthesis. x plus 2 must equal 0. Zero. So what does x have to equal? You get x by itself. You subtract 2 to the other side. x must equal negative 2. So your x-intercepts in this problem would be positive 7 or negative 2. Right? And that's the trickiest part to factoring and defining x-intercepts is that if it says to factor and only to factor, then you can stop after the very first line. All you have to do is put the numbers in parentheses. x minus 7 times x plus 2, that equation is factored. So the very first step, you factored it, and if that's all you have to do per the directions, then you're done. Now, if it says find the x-intercepts, then you got to go all the way to get positive 7 and negative 2. All right, so x-intercepts is a step beyond factoring. You, whether it says to factor or to find x-intercepts, you're going to have to factor. It's just a matter of, do you have to go beyond factoring? And if they ask for the x-intercept, then yes, you have to go beyond factoring. But if they don't ask for the x-intercept, they just want you to factor, then you do that first line, make your two parentheses, and you're done. So between solving for the vertex and factoring, you're good through Wednesday. Now, Thursday's work, I'm going to have you take all these points that we've learned how to find, the vertex, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercept and plot those four points only and make a graph. So that'll be tomorrow's video on how to find those four points. We already know how to find all those four points, but I'll just review everything we've already done on those four points. I'll put them on a graph, connect them to make a parabola, and then you're done. So see you tomorrow.